Uh, we will recover from COVID-19 by investing to stimulate the economy and create jobs. And a big part of our plan to do this is through infrastructure investment. We know how important infrastructure is to our economy. The sector makes up about 13% of the New Zealand economy. Before COVID-19 hit, the government was already making record investments in infrastructure. The $12 billion New Zealand upgrade program announced at the start of this year was the single biggest investment in infrastructure in more than a generation. We are also making sure that we have the workforce to build this infrastructure. And I note from today, July the 1st, all apprenticeships will be free in New Zealand and construction trades training is also free. Uh, we're putting $1,000 a month on the table for businesses to help cover the costs of an apprentice's first year and 500 a month for the second year to ensure apprentices stay in work and to help New Zealand build up the skilled workforce that we need. This, of course, comes on top of existing programmes like Mana and Mahi and He Pōtama Rangatahi, which get our young people into training and work and to quote a certain person, get the nefs off the couch. And we're cutting red tape as well by fast-tracking major new projects through the Resource Management Act. The next step in our plan to recover and rebuild is being announced today, and that is the $3 billion from the COVID Response and Recovery Fund to invest into New Zealand's infrastructure plans. Uh, the Infrastructure Reference Group was set up by the government to work with local councils, businesses and communities to develop a set of infrastructure projects ready to be delivered within 12 months to give greater certainty to our infrastructure sector. I want to thank Mark Binns from Crown Infrastructure Partners and the other members of that group who did a power of work over the last period of time uh, to make sure that uh, those projects were put together. Uh, we had a very substantial response to the call for projects and one byproduct of what we have done is that we now have a greater understanding of the pipeline of projects, not just within central government or local government or the private sector, but right across the New Zealand economy. Uh, New Zealand will do well as we unite for recovery and work together to create jobs and get the economy moving. I'm going to hand over to Minister Jones to talk you through some of the themes of the announcement today, uh, where we are going to see uh, some of the investment going around the country. Uh, there are four broad areas where this announcement is seeking to add fiscal ballast to. Housing and urban development, uh, as is evident in the media material, about 460 million dedicated to those enabling projects. Uh, that's to bring on as housing projects that are often stunted as a consequence of um, attendant infrastructure not being available. Environmental projects, this is to dispel the misapprehension that, uh, as the infrastructure minister, I'm infatuated with grey infrastructure and uh, have less than um, kind thoughts for uh, green infrastructure. That's actually not true. Community and social infrastructure, uh, a number of the projects that were referred um, to Mr Binns did have a strong com community focus to it and this is to assure uh, New Zealanders that this announcement is not purely about the big end of town and infrastructure has to enable a greater quality of life for people down at the grassroots level, community. And obviously cycleways, um, port developments, some roads and walkways, and that sum is 700 million. So we have endeavoured to spread uh, the focus so that it um, basically embraces as many communities of interest that took the time to participate both in this process and um, quite frankly there have been projects that during the period of time were submitted as well to the Provincial Growth Fund and Cabinet has made some generic decisions about all of them. In addition to that you would uh, be aware that um, um, Minister Robertson and myself made some announcements related to $12 billion earlier this year. So there is a tremendous degree of infrastructure activity taking place. Uh, we have announced today some broad breakdown figures for the different regions throughout the country and um, subject to ongoing um, tests with all of the applicants, it's uh, our expectation that um, those projects will be fully announced unless there is a commercial 
probity reason in terms of why they cannot, why they cannot be announced, but it's our expectation to share this good news with Kiwis. Um, there's obviously going to be a lot of pressure as to when do these things actually start. Uh, we've been assured by uh, Mr Binns that um, the things that he will be following up with, they will be started and underway uh, within a 12-month period. Uh, that's not to suggest that some of the uh, conditions and some of the um, shape and form of the projects don't go through a certain level of change. We've learnt that actually happens through the Provincial Growth Fund. But today, these are the global figures. The expectation is that mahi starts within 12 months and um, we've touched a host of different bases that represent constituencies of significance to the mayors of the country, to industry leaders of the country and indeed to the elements that comprise our government uh, led by our Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern.